primarily just working out and getting better. You know, I'd pretty much right as soon as I started, got home, started working out. So right. I've been keeping up with that every day. Right. How would you describe the, the time you had up with the Astros last year? What did that do for you? What did you learn? Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, we had a really good run. Um, trying to do it, do it again this upcoming season. You know, maybe hopefully get that extra win at the end of the year. But you know, we had a we had a really good year. Um, fans came out, supported us a lot. Um, you know, we're just looking forward to next year. What do you want to work on in your game specifically? Uh, just being more consistent, cut down on strikeouts, more contact from the ball in play, and you know, just doing whatever you know the team really needs me to do. Because you know, we're trying to get back to the postseason and win another World Series. So anything, anything I can do to help that out, mm -hmm. benefit the team. Any frustration on not being eligible for rookie of the year? Um. No, nah, it's whatever. Um, no. No, nah, I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, you know, now I can look forward to you know just winning MVP. You know, that'd be. <laughs> oh, you win MVP? Yeah, I'd rather have that. I mean, <laughs> that'd be nice. But yeah, you know, I'm just trying to have a good year and help out the team. And yeah. Have a good season. How do you figure that you do? You feel like you're going to the spring ball, competing for a starting spot now? Yeah, and, I mean, uh, everyone there is going to be competing for you know starting spot. Um, you know, we're trying to get ready for the season, obviously, and you know some guys are trying to work work to making the team. So I'm just trying to go out there, show what I can do again, and mm -hmm. you know see whatever happens happens. Kind of a crowded outfield, though, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's tough. I mean, our 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 team's so good, and we have so many great players. I mean, it's it's tough to you know, break a team like that. But you know, if I just, you know keep playing how I'm playing, it'll all work out. What was your reaction when, when all the news came down on Monday? Yeah, um, well, I was shopping with my mom for some stuff, so I, I, I caught a little bit of it, but, you know, it's it's unfortunate, <coughs> you know, league ruled, you know, what they did, so we just got to keep looking forward to next year and, you know, keep grinding for, for the guys. How, how does it change your approach to the season when you're without your World Series manager and without your World Series winning GM? Who's the two of the architects of, of the squad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think the goal remains the same though. I mean, all, all the guys in the clubhouse still want to win. You know, they, they put in so much so much time and effort into winning games and you know trying to compete and do the best they can out there for the fans and the team. So, you know, the goal the goal still to, still want to still want to win the World Series and you know put a, put a lot of wins in the column. So, you know, that's our goal for this like coming year. I know you won't know until you're there. But what what do you think it'll be like when you guys show up in spring training, the full team together and, and you're without Hinch and, and Luna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, er, every year is different. You know, we some other some guys signed with other teams. You know, we got a couple new guys on the team. You know, coaching staff's a little um, mixed up going around right now. But you know, I, th I think overall we'll get settled in pretty pretty quick. I mean, all, all the guys are comfortable comfortable with each other, and I think we'll have a good year. Kyle, were you aware it was going on? Yeah. You were. Yeah. Um, Aware with what? The same season. I wasn't aware with no any of that. I wasn't on the team, 2017 with all that stuff. But I was aware with you know the league and investigation and all that stuff. Right. So I didn't. I wasn't a part of any anything with the team or anything at that time. So I can't really comment too much about that. But I just I knew about the investigation that was going on. The, obviously, everyone knows about the ruling that they came out with. So how embarrassing do you feel like it is for? The um, you know, anything like that's tough, but you know, I think we'll we'll bounce back this upcoming year. I mean, we have a really good team, so um, great, so great coaching staff. I think we'll have a lot of fans out there, and so we'll win a lot of games. So, you know, we just got to keep looking forward to that. Kyle, because of the timing of these winter caravans with the announcement on Monday, do you guys kind of get the first opportunity to kind of help to, for lack of a better term, right now, rebuild the brand or help to repair a brand? What, because of that, what? What will be your message to fans who no doubt ask you about that, and, and how long do you think that rebuilding or repairing process might, you know, might, might take from, from every one of us? Yeah, I, I think you know we'll we'll still come out and compete every single day, and you know the fan, the fans always come out and support us. So I, th I think we'll we'll just continue continue that. You know we're going to try and win as many games and play as hard as possible. You know the fans are going to come out and support us, and you know the more the better. You know I, I love playing in front of the. Houston fans, you know, they're a great crowd and it's always packed, so I feel like it'll be a good year for us and you know we'll come out, show them some love and you know win a couple games.
the road trips could get a bit interesting, huh? Yeah. Um, you never know. You know, playing on the road is always tough. Um, you know, I think you see them in the playoffs is kind of tough. I've never been there, but you know they, they kind of get on you. But any road road games are tough. You know, you know you're you know the fans aren't cheering for you to win. So you know it will it'll be interesting this upcoming year. Anything else for Kyle? <clears throat> Anything else this part of your game that you want to work on? And you feel like you can play any position in the outfield. Or the other positions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, whatever keeps me out on the field, you know, I always just want to be out there and play. Yeah. Um, you know, just keep <coughs> keep grinding away at bats and trying to, you know, not chase too many pitches and get out of my comfort zone. But, you know, I think if I just, you know, build off what I did last year, I think I'll have a, you know, pretty strong year. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, hit all sports? Uh, I think I did once or twice in a live in spring training last year. In spring training? Yeah, that was about it. I made contact once. I don't know what I did. You did see the ball, though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, it was just like you know, a spring training game. You know, he threw it a couple guys during yeah. the live. So. What do you think of his play? Um, you know, he has he has much pitches. Um, you know, that's always good. He has a good repertoire, and you know, mm -hmm. throws pretty hard, so that always helps. So, I mean, he, he's a great pitcher. He, he's got a lot to look forward to. You know, I think he'll have a good year. Ryan next. Hi. Well, it's good to see everybody here. Um, thank you guys for coming out today. Um, obviously, uh, been a lot of changes since last time I saw a lot of you guys at the World Series. I'm going to start with kind of talking about, you know, my job. So after seven seasons as uh, president of business operations for the Houston Astros, uh, Jim Crane decided to move me into a role of executive advisor to him. Uh, as he's transitioning with his son uh, coming into the organization. And then obviously uh, Monday with what happened with uh, the commissioner's ruling and then Jim's press conference and uh, he letting A.J. Hinch and Jeff Luno go, we find ourselves, uh, you know, months after the World Series uh, without a GM, without a manager, and without a president. So obviously this is a time uh, where there is a lot of in flux with the Houston Astros. Um, I visited with Jim yesterday. I talked to him a few minutes ago before I walked in. And uh, he is actively uh, looking for a manager and for a general manager. And he has personally uh, taken the reins of the organization. And so I, can, I think everybody can see from the press conference that he had on Monday that uh, he's very serious about going above and beyond what Major League Baseball put in uh, for a penalty. And he is uh, determined that this next phase of Astros baseball uh, will be a great phase of Astros baseball. And I have no doubt that he will bring in uh, very high quality and experienced individuals, both as the manager and the general manager of the Houston Astros. Uh, the exciting thing for me is that I get to uh, sit by his side and help him through this process. Uh, my new role is also going to enable me to be back here in Round Rock a little bit more uh, this summer, which has, uh, you know, been one of my passions since I started this uh, back in the late 90s, so I'm excited about that. Um, the caravan is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, the timing is uh, a little odd, but I think from an organizational standpoint, the fact that we're able to put this chapter behind us and move on, being weeks out from spring training, is a good thing. And with Kyle being here and with Forrest being here, uh, we're getting to show off two of our, you know, top prospects, first-round draft picks, and guys that are really going to be the cornerstone of the Houston Astros uh, moving forward. So with that kind of opening statement, I'd, I'd be happy to answer any questions anybody has. Three of the, of the, um, of the, uh, of the events that have happened the last couple of days, losing, losing A.J., losing the GM, and, and also losing the mm -hmm. draft picks, which, which of those do you think will make the most impact you know, it would only be a guess because I don't think any of us really know. Um, you know, the, the, the draft picks are going to be, uh, they're going to be tough down the road. You won't see those in the short term. Um, you know, I think in the short term, uh, A.J. obviously had great rapport with the players and he did a phenomenal job and Jeff built an incredible organization. So their good works that they did over the years uh, for Houston and for the Astros will not be erased from, from one event. Uh, but I think, you know, in the short term, we have a really good team. Like, look at our team on paper. We're going to 
knock the cover off the baseball. We're going to score a lot of runs. Uh, obviously, losing Garrett Cole to the Yankees, uh, he was dominant last year. And, you know, you still return a Cy Young Award winner. Uh, you know, you've got, obviously, between Grinke and um, Verlander. And then we've got Lance McCullers coming back. And then you look at somebody like a Brad Peacock or even an Arkeedy who stepped up. And there's an opportunity for guys like Forrest. If he has a, a good spring training, uh, you could see him bust his way into that starting rotation. I expect to see him in the big leagues this year with us in a very significant role. So uh, there's jobs to be won, and I think that's always exciting for an organization. Uh, obviously, last year our pitching dominated, you know, really start to, to finish. It was an incredible year. Uh, our bullpen was really good, and even though we've lost some pieces, uh, you know, you still have Presley and Asuna on the back end. Uh, we were able to get Joe Smith uh, back. We, you know, have Austin Pruitt now. So we have some pieces in there. It's still going to be a really, really hard team to crack coming out of spring training. And these guys, both Kyle and Forrest, have their work cut out for them to try to get playing time because this is a tough roster to try to get your time in on because there's so many good players. You mentioned because of the timing of, of, of the announcement, the timing of winter caravan. It's kind of what I asked Kyle a minute ago. Uh, this, this is kind of y'all's first opportunity to get out mm -hmm. among fans face to face and, and, and do, you know, may, maybe some, you know, maybe repairing of a brand, so, you know, so to speak. How do you go about that? How long do you think that would take? Well, you know, I, I can't speak to that. All I can say is fans want to hear about the team. They love this team. Their connection is with these players. And I know guys like Bregman and Jose Altuve and Springer and all the rest of the guys that we have, they want to get out and they want to play baseball. And we're weeks away from doing that. In the last three years, we've gone deep, deep, deep in, you know, to October and November. And so uh, these off seasons are getting shorter and shorter every single year. And probably where the last couple off seasons guys were wishing for a little more time with everything that's happened, I think they're ready to get back on the field. And I think as soon as we can get back to highlighting the quality <coughs> of play that these guys bring to the table, uh, the better for the brand and for the Houston Astros. What's, what's the, the kind of mindset of this organization right now while you are in flux? Is it, is it trying to stabilize things, trying to just get on the field and play? What's, what's going on with, with Houston as a whole? Well, I mean, you really have to talk to Jim Crane uh, about that. From my perspective, look, this has been a, a crazy week, and uh, here we are on Wednesday, so this thing is still very, very fresh. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of relationships uh, with the guys that got let go. There's a lot of, of feelings of appreciation for what both of these men did for the Houston Astros. And so that healing process is still going on, but I think everybody is glad that the commissioners made his decision we can start turning towards baseball and spring training, and that's why I'm glad to have these guys here today. And, you know, the kids at the hospital they're going to go visit with, the fans they're going to see today at, at Dell Diamond, uh, they want to talk baseball, and they want to see these guys continue to, to grow because we have two of the best talents in the game right here today with us, and these guys are going to be, uh, you know, future Major League All-Stars, both of them, and I'm excited to see them get after it in spring training this year. Do you feel like in any way this taints the World Series title? You know, that's an interesting question, Kirk, and I've had a lot of people kind of on social media talk about that. You know, baseball's a really tough game, and, uh, you know, whether it's, it's somebody wanting to know what's coming or somebody not wanting to know what's coming, uh, you know, you still have to hit the ball. You still have to play. You still have to go on the road. There's a lot of, of things that go into a 162-game season, and so... Um, for me, 2017 with Harvey, what our city went through, uh, personally growing up, a Houstonian, an Astros fan, watching my dad lose in 80 and 86, watching the Oilers, watching the Cougars, that joy that winning in Los Angeles brought to me and every other person in that city will never be taken away and I don't think it will ever be changed by what happened this week with the commissioner. Were you stunned by the news, or do you have any awareness of what's going on? Um, so obviously I was aware of what was happening with uh, the investigation. Um, I was at the meeting when the commissioner uh, said that the next team that, you know, is caught using electronics uh, is going to, you know, feel the wrath. And mm -hmm. um, in some ways this kind of, you know, feels like uh, SMU in the 80s because, you uh, you know, it, it wasn't that this wasn't going on throughout the industry because I think with the reports that have surfaced, people realize that this was going on. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't make it right. And 
the fact that uh, the investigation proved what it proved. Um, everyone knew that there were going to be strong consequences. I didn't know what those were going to be. Uh, but for the commissioner, I think he was at a point where um, for him, this was a major decision in his tenure as commissioner. And uh, I knew he was going to follow up with strong action, and he did. So it feels like this is you, but you don't consider this a death number, do you? No, because, you know, obviously it's, it's the difference between pro sports and college sports and scholarships and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the draft picks um, will definitely have an impact down the road, um, both first and second rounders. If you look at the majority of our, you know, players on the field, uh, a lot of those guys are first or second round draft picks. So you get quality, quality players from those positions. Mm -hmm. How much do you think that the, the draft picks and losing those will put pressure on Minor, you know, your, your, your minor league stops like Round Rock, you know, in terms of developing players, or does well, it change that pressure? I go back to what Jim Crane created. Jim Crane created a model that was one that was going to be about drafting and developing players and being able to supplement those players like a Forrest Whitley and, and a Kyle Tucker with veteran guys. And you've seen us be able to do that, whether it was Verlander or Grinky or Brantley or any of the veterans that we brought in. But the core group of our guys, you know, the Springers, the Bregmans, uh, the Altuves, uh, they've all come through the system. And so I don't think that will change. Uh, it will make it tougher for a couple years uh, because you won't be picking at the top. You'll be picking further down the line. Uh, but we've had a lot of good players that, that were not first-round draft picks. So it will be upon the new GM and the group that he brings in and player development to try to, try to you know, find good good players in those spots. I know there's always an urgency to win now, but is it does it seem a little more heightened because of the, the lack of draft picks, so it seems like the window is now suddenly a lot smaller than maybe it might have been otherwise? Well, our sport's different. You know, uh, Kyle was a 15 draft pick, and um, Forrest was a 17 draft pick. And baseball's hard. Very few guys. These guys have skyrocketed through the minor leagues. But a lot of players, it takes them time, especially out of high school, which both these guys came out of high school. Uh, Bregman was, was up very quickly, but he came out of college and, and was a little bit older. And so you don't feel the effects of losing draft picks, you know, one or two years down the road. You feel them four or five years down the road. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Okay. Anybody else? Why couldn't, you, why couldn't you stay president and Jim just bring in Jared or remember you? I don't know. That, you'll have to up? you'll have to ask Jim that. <laughs> and about your dad, your dad's no longer has the. You know, my dad. Uh, my dad loves the game of baseball, and yeah. um, you know, he really likes the connection with with the pitchers, and he likes visiting with pitchers and talking to pitchers. Um, and so, will he do something again in the game? He might, mm -hmm. but um, is he doing something right now? No, he is not. So we'll have to see what the future holds. Reed, is there any sense for uh, hiring from within or going outside to get sort of a fresh start? I think Jim is looking at everything right now. As I said before, he, he is personally handling this search, and he is, uh, he is looking both internally and externally. So we will, we will see what he comes up with. Brad Ausmus candidate? I, I don't know the list of candidates, so you'll have to ask him. Okay. Thank you guys very much. Let's let uh, Forrest get up here. Forrest, really yeah. is, sir. Thank you, Reed. <coughs> <clears throat> it felt like being in front of the firing line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did, that, did, did that make it a little bit awkward and tough for you and Kyle? Uh, no, not really. Um, yeah. I had the exquisite advantage of watching these two fine men answer before me, so um, <laughs> <laughs> makes it a little bit easier on me. Get a little prepped. Yes, sir. Can we get your reaction to the news this week? Though? Yeah, you know, when I when I saw it, I was uh, I was you know pretty disappointed. I was uh, I was a little shocked. Uh, but, you know, those two guys, I've, I've built a pretty good relationship this past, uh, since I've been drafted, actually, you know, you know Jeff uh, drafted me and Kyle had a pretty, pretty special connection with him, you know. He had many opportunities to trade us away and, and didn't, so, you know, best of luck with them going forward. On a totally unrelated note to that, I, we ask you this, I think, every time we talk to you, but when you found out you were drafted by the Strohs mm -hmm. right here on this field, what's it like kind of coming back and just what are the memories anytime you're here even though you played here and all that before 
of that special moment for you? Yeah, there's there's obviously a lot of nostalgia coming back to this uh, stadium being drafted, you know, 100 feet that way. Uh, remember it very vividly. It's uh, always a special moment in my life for sure. Forrest, it's been an interesting ride in the last two years for you. Um, where do you feel like you're at right now, and what are your hopes going into this new season? Yeah, um, came up. You know, on a hot start, and then obviously this last, last season didn't uh, go the way that I wanted it to. But you know, things are looking good right now. I I learned a lot from my mistakes this year. Um, pretty glaring stuff, I'd say. So working on that this off season, finished it up uh, pretty nice in the Arizona Fall League. So uh, things are looking good right now. What are some of those things that you saw that you know you could try to correct? Yeah, the the biggest thing for me was just kind of you know mechanical inconsistencies leading to walking guys was just the biggest thing. Um, getting behind in the count, uh, getting those two you know, hitter advantage counts, and then leaving the ball over the plate. And you know, obviously, the PCL uh, is a pretty tough place to pitch already. And it's an even tougher place to pitch when you're behind in the count all the time. So uh, just try to get ahead in the count, uh, you know, really refine those 2-0 pitches, not leaving it down the middle, because that's going to happen. Uh, and just and all, just throw more strikes. Even with those struggles that you had last year, I mean, you still got Reed saying you're a future all-star. Like, what, what does that mean that they, they still have this faith and this belief in you, and what does that do for your confidence? Yeah, it's awesome. And this organization has been like that since the beginning. Um, they've been nothing but supportive you know, through the thick and the thin. Uh, so it's, it, it means a lot for them to, to believe in me like that. But the biggest thing for me is for me to believe in me like that. Um, so just kind of kind of go into the 2020 season with a lot of confidence and uh, you know pitch like I pitch out like I know how to. Do you still have that belief in yourself, or was it shaken a little bit from last year? Yeah, I, I definitely still have that belief in myself. It was definitely shaken last year. The confidence was was down. Uh, you know, having a 12-5-4 doesn't really do a whole lot for your confidence. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, but like I said, finishing up in the, in the Arizona Fall League, uh, pitched really well there. Uh, with those with those good pitches fresh on the mind, I think will help me going into 2020. How much does it help a young pitcher like you whenever you can go to spring training and have you know a couple of most likely future Hall of Famers in Verlander and Greinke and, and some other really experienced guys there to be able to learn from, draw from? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I had the I had the opportunity last spring training to work with uh, Garrett and, and Verlander quite a bit. And uh, this, this spring training, we'll have the opportunity to work, ver, work with Verlander again. And then and Zach Grinke, two Cy Young winners, very you know, established big leaguers. So uh, it's, it's, a really, it's, a, it's a real honor to be able to work with those guys. Uh, you know, they're they're you know, some of the best of all time, in my opinion. So just kind of pick their brain uh, and you know, take, take with what they say with a grain of salt. Because I know last year, Verlander is a little bit, a little bit different and, un, and, un, and unorthodox with what he does. So try not to do everything that he does, but uh, nonetheless, that information is very valuable. Is the biggest thing you're just so dang tall? <laughs> is that it a could big be. part of the issue, you think? Yeah, I can't, I can't really decide what's harder, pitching or finding inseams for my pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your expectation uh, going to spring? Do you feel like there's any chance you, you break out of spring with the big club, or you feel like I'm going to need half a year or more? Yeah, I, th I think the biggest thing for me is just to be cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Um, I, I have great confidence in myself that I'm going to be able to throw uh, very well in the Grapefruit League and you know uh, leave a good impression. Uh, but obviously the goal is to, to break, the, break, uh, break camp with the team. But mm -hmm. uh, if that doesn't happen, it's no big deal. Just come here in Round Rock, dominate, mm -hmm. and get up there. Is there any chance you, you have so many good Yeah, I, I've I've heard I've heard that in the past, but I think for me the most important thing is I know myself the best, and I know that I have the ability to use all of those five pitches, mm -hmm. and uh, and that will eventually help me succeed in in the big leagues. Uh, so, like I said, just just having confidence in myself and knowing myself is the most important thing. But you're not six pitch, I'm thinking about throwing a splitter. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. Anything special in the offseason? Uh, no, I've just been working out and living out in uh, Phoenix right now, uh, trying to chase that consistent weather. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, just working out four days a week, throwing five days a week, uh, just trying to work as hard as I can.
Was there any one lowest of the lows you had last year where you just well, I'm at bottom, I just, you know. Yeah, uh, it was uh, in Omaha. I gave up three home runs in two innings. Yeah. <laughs> I remember it vividly. <laughs> what were you going through your mind then? Uh, hopelessness. Felt yeah. lost out there. Yeah. I think anybody would feel pretty hopeless giving up three home runs in two innings. Right. <laughs> yeah. What got you out of that? Uh, just throwing the ball better, honestly, after coming back from the injury and uh, this last season. Uh, things weren't great, but they were a lot better. Right. Um, finishing up the season in Corpus, uh, you know, throwing the ball a whole lot better down there, just trying to, you know, regain a foundation and then, like I said, going to the Arizona Fall League and finishing up really, really nicely there, just, uh, you know, really boosted the confidence. Mm -hmm. you, you led the league in strikeouts, didn't you? In the I, th I believe so. Yeah. I believe so, yes, sir. Yeah. Do you feel 100% healthy? I know yeah, oh, yeah. Problems. Yeah, the, the health I plan going forward should not be an issue, just knowing what I had to go through this year. I kind of, I know where things went wrong. Um, so going forward, obviously the year then wasn't great, but I learned a lot from it and it'll help me going forward. Right. Okay, guys got one more, last one. Have you studied yeah. videos of any other pitchers, you know, or any Johnson or anybody like that who's had the hype? Or anybody that you like to study? Them, yeah, uh, when I was young, my favorite pitcher was Tim Linscombe. Yeah. Uh, so I modeled my mechanics after him when I was young, but uh, obviously our statures are a little bit different. So uh, <laughs> going forward, uh, you know, coming into the Astros organization, Berlander is, you know, the, you know, the cream of the crop as far as right. uh, mechanics goes. He's, uh, what, 36 now, and he's still throwing 99 miles an hour. So <laughs> those are the guys that you want to model the right. mechanics after for sure. Right. Thank, you, right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.